Hey guys, it's May May. My friend Gareth has done the most brilliant thing, and that is to create an argyle pattern using these one inch ink pads. I think it is brilliant. And I asked him if I could copy him and make this, and here's why. My husband loves sweater vests, and as soon as I saw this, it made me think of a sweater vest that Vince would wear, and I wanted to see if I could make a card that looked like it. Now, this piece of cardstock is four and a quarter by five and a half, so it's the entire front of an A2 card. And I'm gonna make two score marks. The first one is at two and one eighth, okay? So I'm splitting the center of the card front. I'm gonna turn this in my scoreboard and make one more score mark, and it's gonna be at two and one half. So I'm not doing a center cross mark, I'm doing a little bit higher than center. So the top of my card will be here, the shorter section, and the longer section will be the bottom of my card. Now don't worry about those score lines because when we finish you're not going to see them because we're going to emboss this whole thing. But what I needed was a place to give me a starting point. So I've zoomed you guys in really close and these are the colors I have chosen to use today. Majestic Blue, Imperial Purple, and Habanero. I'll move those out of the way and I'm gonna start with this Majestic Blue. It's gonna be kinda of the color that I use the focal point of, okay? So I'm gonna take the Majestic Blue and we're gonna use the stamp pad just like Gareth did. He turned it on an angle and he, and he just stamped it down on his page. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to use these crosshairs I made to get me pretty much in the center, although I won't be perfect. So let's put this down and then I'm going to press it and lift up. So that gets me started in the middle. Now from here, I'm only going to worry about matching up the points. Okay, so I'm going to go to the habanero and I'm going to turn it sideways. And now I'm looking underneath to check my points there and I'm going to press that into place. Don't worry if you don't get full impressions and don't worry if it's not perfectly perfect there. You see how that one's a little tilted? Because this can look like texture and that'll be fine. And now I'm gonna take this guy and go right next to it. And I'm gonna use those corners to help me line it up and stamp that one down. And it's pretty close to right. Now what I'm gonna do is put some scrap paper under here because I want it to run off the page as well. So let me get my little scrap paper pad. And on either side, I'm gonna stamp that navy again. So I'm going back to the majestic blue. And right here, I'm gonna stamp navy to finish that off. I'm gonna flip it around and do it again. Just so my argyle pattern runs all the way across the page. I just think this is so cute what he has come up with. It is brilliant. All right, so now let's keep playing. So the next thing Garrett did is he made a um, one inch square to be his guide for doing the stitch marks through his argyle pieces. And I'm gonna lay this down and using that same cross mark that I made, it's gonna help me line up and I'm gonna use my white gel pen and going right beside this little square that I cut, I'm using it as my guide for making my argyle stitches. How brilliant is this, right? This is this is exactly what Gareth did. Now mine's a little bit different because I had to have those crosshairs. I'm just kind of like that. I know I'm covering you guys up. I'll be back where you can see it in just a second. But I'm trying not to move my square here. Keep going around. And I think it's best to use cardstock for this square because it's thick enough to support the pin pressure against it and it won't ruffle on you while you're doing it. Look how stinking cute that is. And now I'm just gonna take the same square and go right next to it. And I'm using those score marks to help me line it up, okay? And I'm gonna do some more stitch lines right beside it. Just all the way around this square. I think this is so smart. When I saw his video, I was like, I'm itching to try that technique. Because, like I said, Vince loves sweater vests and it's getting to be that season for them, you know? So there's two of them, and I'm gonna continue this out right to the end. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cut a V-neck in the top of this guy, and I'm gonna do it right here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to eyeball down about an inch to an inch and a quarter. This is just like we do when we make the fishtail banners, okay? So I've cut down onto that score line, and now I'm gonna do an angle cut from one side to that point, just like we do when we do a fishtail banner. If you need it to be super precise, you can take that piece you just cut and lay it onto 
the other side and use it as your guide for cutting the other V. So you can just lay it there and slice that in just like that. So see, now I have a V-neck. How cute, right? So in my cuddle bug, I have my A plate and my B plate. This is kind of the closest thing I had to sweater texture. It's really not, but it kind of looks like sweater texture. It's actually called the spring blossom folder, but can you see that it's kind of textury like that? And I thought it would work really good for the sweater. So we're going to use it. So I've put that card front in there and I'm going to place a B plate on top and then run this through. Now that it's done, let's take it out and see what we got. Oh, that's pretty cute. That looks pretty sweater textury. I think that works really well. Now we need to do a little more embossing, but not with our cuddle bug this time. Now I have these pieces I've cut to be trim on the sweater. This piece is three quarters of an inch and this is three eighths of an inch. Now I cut this a full length of paper because I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna need because once I crimp this, it's gonna draw up a little bit. So let me show you what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna use my Marvy crimper. Looks like this and you just curl this little end to get that going. And I'm gonna stick this guy in here just like this. I'm gonna do both of them the same way. Just get that in there and then turn it and it'll catch. Just run that little edge out. And you can see now I have a crimped piece. Now you could certainly just run this through another embossing folder, but I never get to use my crimper enough. So I thought I would do this. And I was on Pinterest looking and so many people make theirs with their little crimper when they make these little vests like this or these little sweater cards. And I was like, that's a good idea. So now I have some trim for our card. Let's bring it back over. And here's the card front. So this piece I'm gonna put at the bottom. I wanted the bottom to have a bigger ribbed section like this. So this one will go here and I can trim it away once I get it glued down. And I'm actually gonna use some sticky tape for this one. And the reason is those ridges only touch in so many places. So if I put some sticky tape down, I'll be sure to have it grab everywhere those touch. So I'm just gonna use this little acrylic block to help me cut that nice and straight. And we'll take the backer off. With all this embossed on embossed, it works good to do the sticky tape because you know you're getting adhesive where the paper is lifted. All right, and we'll just sit this guy into place and he just runs right along the bottom. And then I can just rub him into that sticky tape. Then we can just trim this edge off. Let's turn it around and do it so we can see exactly what we're trimming. There we go. So there's his bottom trim. Now let's work on the top trim. Again, I'm gonna use some sticky tape going to start up here at the top, put this down like so. I'm going to go ahead and peel that off so I can overlap it here where the V is. Now I'm just going to lay a piece in here like this on top of that adhesive. Now holding my scissors under that strip and lined up with the point of that V we've made, I'm going to slice. So I'm kind of going to do like a miter there. You don't have to be that precise. Again, you can just let these just line up and then just overlap them. But by doing this, see how I have a matching miter now that I can come to the other side and put it down. Pretty easy. I mean, it's not hard to do and you have a nice deep V neck there. All right, now we need to trim this guy's off. And see how I wasn't sure how much I was going to need? But now I probably have enough to do another card there, too. This is going to be so cute for guy cards for the season, for this winter. Won't this be perfect? I think that it will. So I'm just using a white A2 card base. I just folded it there. And then this guy is just going to sit right on top here. And since I've got my sticky tape out, let's just use it. Won't even have to get anything else out. Plus, it'll be good for that embossed back there to stick it all down. Now, please go check out my friend Gareth's channel and see what he did with this card. He made, I think, three or four different samples using this technique. And it is just super cute. And you won't be sorry if you go take a look at it. Because you will definitely see something you can do that you can use this for. Can you imagine making ugly sweaters for Christmas? Oh my goodness, that would be so cute. All right, so enough sticky tape. Let's peel the backer off. And now I'm just going to stick this straight onto the front. Just like that. And that is 
easy and adorable and perfect for the guy in your life. So there you go. There's Garris Argyle technique and I love it. I think it is perfect for your guy cards. Head over to Garris channel and check out what he did. I'll put a link below and tell him that May May sent you. I want him to know that you guys went to take a look because it is a super cool technique. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Now listen, I have a Facebook group you can share your recreations on, but so does Gareth and his group will be linked below too. So if you make this, go share it on Gareth's group so his followers can see what you're doing too and that you can inspire them as well. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great one. Bye-bye.